have come from some place. There are struggles that we've conducted in terms of promoting and fighting for gender equality. We don't know how much our gender relationships in this country have, have been transformed so that we move towards gender equality. We've just come from an election. How did we perform? Did we do better? Are there more women elected now to the National Assembly, to Senate? and to the other levels. Uh, why are these numbers the way they look? Are they what you in the women movement uh, have been working for? Is this all that you have been working for all these years? Is this what we worked for? Is this what we were planning for? So what do you think should be done as we move forward so that we can perform in another way? Political participation for women in Kenya has been an uphill struggle and and for many it has been many a time we have asked so is this road uphill all the way you know there is no point where there's there's a, at least a plateau where you can relax because no sooner do you relax the gains are quickly eroded but i think that we have to look at we know that one of the main reasons that women have performed pe performed poorly before is that there was a lack of political will. But even before we get to the lack of political will, I want us to look at the history of struggle in Kenya. When we look, Kenya has had several struggles. We had the independence struggle, something that we celebrate annually, and we celebrate the heroes of that struggle. In documenting the struggle of Kenya's political history, we have not documented women's role such that the women are seen as bystanders or at best played no real role in the struggle. And so when we look at the heroes of our political struggle, we don't see the women. Then we look at the political struggle. When you look at the political formations from 1963, Kanu, Kadu, the Kavirondo group, uh, KPU, you don't see women in the political in the political formations that were taking place at that time. So that when the Africans were fighting for the right to also govern themselves and be part of the political structures, the women were not there. Then we look at the constitution review, the struggle for a new constitution. That too has been documented. And we have heroes of the struggle today who are celebrated in Kenya, but we don't see the women's role in it. And now, that's not to say that women have not participated in all these landmark struggles that Kenyans hold dear to their history. It's simply that we have not documented those roles. We have not documented the roles that women have played. We have not celebrated the women who have played those roles. So that when women make demands for inclusion, they are seen as wanting to reap where they did not sow. Now, I think that that is one of the things that as the women's movement, we have not adequately addressed and we must address it because the women's role in all these landmark struggles must be documented and must be celebrated. We must demand our place in history and recognition. The struggle was characterized by the need for a legal framework. 
to enforce women's participation. And we achieved that, which is why the rallying call during the referendum was, women, you must vote for this constitution. This is your constitution. It recognizes you. So we need, to sh we need a clear shift in the way we are doing things. And we need to come together. There is strength in unity. And on this one, as women, we absolutely cannot compromise. We have heard the often uh, quoted, uh, I will not call it an adage, but accusation, that women are their own worst enemies. When women don't support women, oh, women don't love one another. Men don't support each other. We don't say men are their own enemies. But for women, we say that women are their own worst enemies. We got the numbers. And the problem with numbers is that the women who are part of those numbers shouldn't just be anybody. Now, I'm going to use the F word because the F word is very, very important in that most feminists have got an agenda for the transformation of society in general in ways that will contribute to the development of democracy in ways that will allow everyone to achieve their fullest potential. So the first argument then is about it is fair and just to have women there. The second is that to have women there increases the uh, deliberative chamber who is in the voices, the different, the diversity of voices in your deliberative chambers that will discuss policy. We want everybody's views because policy and legislation is something that affects the whole of society. The more voices from society that you have there, the better. And so that's, these are simple arguments that no one can dispute. It's not your genitals that matter, actually. Although in the case of women, it is the fact that we perform very particular roles in society. So there are very specific needs that women have that women will be sensitive to. But not all women will be. A lot of women don't give a damn about that sort of thing. So actually, you've got to be very careful who the women are that you put there. And that's where the F word counts. They must be feminists, I'm sorry. So, so really, you will have a proportion of women who will, in fact, be proponents of gender equality and equity in society and who will foster the needs and interests of women. I want to congratulate the Kenyans because you have actually moved ahead of us. You have a legal framework. We don't have, so, so that's a minus for us. And you are becoming much more visible. You are talking about increase. We don't have that increase yet. As, at, as I'm speaking, we had an election in 2011 in the National Assembly where we have the bicameral, the upper and the lower house. We have um, 109 senators, just seven of them are women. We have um, 360 members of the lower house, and we just have 23 women. If you go, we have 36 states in Nigeria, 990 members of state house of assemblies, and we just have 68 women. So I should clap for you because you seem to have moved a little bit ahead of us. Talking about agenda, along the line, we came up with we had seen several manifestos, manifestos, and they didn't work for us, all the political manifestos. So we built our own women who manifesto in Nigeria. And in that woman manifesto, we spoke about different issues. So when you are coming for election, one of the things that we want to negotiate with you as a way of coming up with an agenda with you is to put that woman manifesto before you to say, these are the agendas. These are, the, are these, these are our expectations. Are they things that you think you can meet up with? And one of the things that we also do is immediately after election, we call like a national summit of women in parliament to sit down and look at some of the agendas. And don't let us also just work at the national, national level. 
Let's go to the constituency. Let's work with the women in constituency because that is where we can really see the difference. And that is where women can actually make the big difference. So I, I think it's a big challenge, but let me just tell you once again, you are just starting. And I believe that you can really do it. Yes, I believe. There is a lot. Or, or is it only me? Uh, is everybody inspired by the things they are hearing today? Um, so here is the time to get off our sackcloth and uh, you know apply some oil on our faces and actually get out and start uh, go back to the trenches and continue to do the work so i think everybody here is very happy with the things that have been said by daisy uh, by professor sheila and of course uh, by uh, dr abiola